Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. One of the ladies years, not years, months ago, asked me to explain the warning signs of a narcissistic abuser. Well, here it goes. Some of you young people, now I took notes because I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Some of you young people, you get all excited when a football star, basketball star, excuse me, anybody who's popular at school is all over you. Oh, he likes me. Oh, he's crazy about me. He's so cute. And you go through all these changes, getting all excited with your girlfriend, seeing you with one of the finest boys on campus. And you think that the two of you are all that and a bag of chips. And you have no idea you're walking with a walking grenade. You have no idea. Because he knows what to say. He knows how to tell you how pretty you are. See, people who prey on other people can tell their needs. They spot them. He can tell if you need to feel pretty. He can tell if you need to feel like you're loved. He can tell if you need to have somebody just shower stuff all over you, give you all this attention. So when you are with a guy and you see how cute he is and charming and you go to a dance and all of a sudden you notice he's jealous, He's possessive? Sweetheart, that's not love. That doesn't mean he's crazy about you and he loves you and he's so afraid he's going to lose you. No, he's getting ready to train you for his purposes, not yours. And when the training begins, so will the slapping, the beating, the pushing, the shoving, the kicking. And don't forget, the intimidation. Oh, he'll have you so scared. You will diss your parents' love for this man's smutty treatment of you because he's cute. And you love him, so you think. Another danger signal is when you see him, He's sexy. He's a take charge kind of guy. Yeah. But if you disagree with his plan or you question what he said he's going to do, all of a sudden he's angry with you. How dare you question me? And all of a sudden, baby, you have an altercation going on, either verbally or both verbally and physically. Now, here's another thing. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're his woman now, right? You're his, yeah, yeah, his possession. You're his woman. You're his girl, whatever you want to call it. Well, how come you ain't forking it up? If you're going to be his woman, and you know, fork up that nookie. That's what he thinks. That's not what you're supposed to do. But he will manipulate you and guilt trip you and, and make you feel like you don't really love him if you're not giving it up to him. Because he needs that. And you should be very, very concerned about his needs. Even though he doesn't give a rat's you know what about yours. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's neither here nor there. I know, I know. But you're supposed to be there for him in every way, shape, and form. Why? Because you belong to him. Now, here's another one. <laughs> he will start telling you how you are so unique, how you are so different from all the other girls. He might even tell you that nobody else ever understood him like you do. Think of all these things I'm saying now. If you have heard this, guess what? 
get your heels to clicking. And just, oh, we were just supposed to be brothers and sisters. I always saw you as a friend. You better do it before he starts thinking, lockdown. Because when they start believing you belong to them, you almost got to fight for your life to cut away. It gets that weird. I mean, it gets weird. It really does. Okay. Now, when you get into this love thing, he and, and you might end up in a little argument or something may go wrong because of him. But trust me, he will not take responsibility. Even if you doubt whether you may have caused him to make a mistake, trust me, baby, it was his decision, bottom line. No matter what you did or said, it was still his decision. If he got it wrong, he got it wrong. You didn't make him get it wrong. It was not your fault. You did not have a nickel in that dime. And I'm just talking real life right now. I just want you to hear some of this stuff because a lot of times you think that he's in love with you. And he's not. He doesn't even know what love is. So now you have a, a tiff. And he pushes you, knocks you around, whatever uh, he flirts with another chick, whatever. You know, he's supposed to put up with this after all. You know, he's got issues and you're supposed to understand, right? Anyway, and then when you want him to apologize, you know, he, he may begrudgingly do it. But trust me, if you bring it up again, it's going to be, I apologized already, didn't I? Didn't I apologize? Well, what more do you want? That should be enough. If you love me. Yeah, it gets really ridiculous. And the only way you really see how stupid and ridiculous it is, is if you're not emotionally entangled. That is why you cannot afford to have sex. Because once you have sex, baby, the blinders are on. <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay, now. Another thing you will end up with, if you tell him that you're ready to end the relationship after you've gone past a certain point, and he tells you, I will destroy you, that means it's the fear tactic now. He's going to have you so scared and on eggshells, and he may threaten to hurt your brother or kill your mother or do something to somebody you love that you don't want to have done. I mean, you'll start feeling obligated for no reason, just on a bunch of smoke signals. And baby, if he's doing that kind of threatening stuff, your whole family should be in on pressing charges. I mean, get the boy arrested. I listened to a doctor. He said, when you press charges, the ones that tend to, to do some changing and back up off of that abusive behavior, those are the ones who spend nine months or longer in jail. Jail doesn't do many people much good because it's very, it's very counterproductive in too many ways. But when it comes to an abuser, and if you ask for my personal opinion, I think it's because somebody gets up there and whoops his tail and gives him a whooping. He's been long overdue. And he starts getting it, how it feels to be treated that way. Yeah. But, I mean, that's just my opinion. I don't know. But I tell you what, you better press charges. Now, I've mentioned a lot of the uh, behavioral patterns. Okay. What you have to understand is these guys honestly believe that you are way down here and they're way up there. They believe that you have no value. They believe that, that you were put on the face of this earth for their use, for their use. So that gives them an excuse to abuse. You hear me? Now, Another thing, a lot of times, men like that are also very uh, antagonistic toward women. There's a, a deep-rooted, subtle 
hatred towards women, a contempt for women, just like there are deep-seated, deep-rooted feelings of contempt from some, not all, some policemen towards black men. There are deeply rooted attitudes from some judges to all black people, period, from jail wardens, I mean, uh, uh, prison guards. There's this deeply rooted thing that needs to vent. And the only place they can vent legally is within the legal system where they can commit crimes. Well, it's the same way in these relationships. They don't have strong enough laws that deal with abuse. And guess what? The men know it. So they will literally discuss amongst themselves how to beat their women without getting caught. Because they believe that's what you do. <laughs> and it's learned behavior, baby. They learn it from their parents, from their friends, from their cousins, whoever. It's learned behavior. And unfortunately, there's no way you're going to change it. You can't save them. You can't change them. You got to get. Get the heck out of Dodge. And I'm going to leave you with that. And I hope you wise up. And no, it never gets better. It always gets worse.